What should you as traders be looking for in the week ahead? In this episode, we delve into the European, Commonwealth and Asian markets to help you make all those important trading decisions. All this with Bob Mason of FX Empire. This is your week ahead. Hello, Bob, and thank you once again for joining us. Let's dive straight in into the major currency pairs. What should our traders be looking out for at the start of the month and the week ahead? So it's a busy week ahead for the US dollar. Short and weak, key stats, consumer confidence on Tuesday. We've got ISM manufacturing PMIs on Wednesday, along with the ADP numbers for non-farm. And then you've got on Thursday, weekly jobless claims and non-farm payrolls on the unemployment rate for June. Those are the key stats to look out for. Going to need to see ISM numbers, survey numbers coming in line with the market PMIs. Going to need to see consumer confidence pick up to support that economic optimism that the markets have and the IMF doesn't. And then you've got obviously non-farm payrolls and weekly job schemes. Employment numbers are going to need to continue improving to support consumption and service sector activity. For the pound, quite weak, finalised PMI numbers don't expect too much from that. Finalised GDP numbers as well, not going to expect too much from that. Uh, you know, right off the first quarter, right off the second quarter, Brexit's going to be the area of focus. For the euro, German unemployment numbers, French and German consumer spending numbers, those are the areas of focus, along with PMI numbers out of Italy and Spain. Don't want to see any downward revisions for the finalised numbers for the eurozone, France or Germany. However, all of this is up in the air when you consider the fact that you know, a trade war could be on the horizon between the US and Europe. And then we're obviously talking about, you know, a second wave of the pandemic as well. So it promises to be traditionally a busy start of the week as normal to a new month. But how about the Commonwealth currencies? How are they faring? Give us your insight. For the Commonwealth currencies, let's start with the Aussie dollar. Quiet start of the week. So we're looking at the end of the week and that's retail sales and trade data. RBA's Quietly confident that it's not going to be as bad as, you know, they'd initially expected on the economic projections front. The IMF thinks otherwise, as we heard last week. So trade data and obviously retail sales are key. For the Kiwi dollar, there's nothing to consider. For the Luni, we've also got trade figures. But ultimately, we got private sector PMI numbers out of China. We're going to need to factor that in. And that's the MBS and Kaisen numbers and expect Kaisen figures to have a greater influence. It will also have COVID-19 and any trade war talk also to consider for the markets in the week. You know, you've got the EU, you've got China. There's plenty going on geopolitically as Trump tries to deflect from domestic woes. So our traders should take a little bit of care next week as it seems that there's going to be a lot of data releases coming out. Uh, but how about our Asian giants, uh, Japan and China in particular? Uh, how are they looking? For the Japanese yen, busy week ahead. We've got retail sales and industrial production figures at the start of the week. Focus will then shift to uh, finalised PMI numbers for June. Uh, don't expect too much from that. And then you've got the Tankan second quarter survey numbers as well. That'll give you an idea of what to look out for for the third quarter and whether the Japanese economy is expecting any marked rebound. Retail sales is going to have to, you know, pick up and service sector activity has struggled um, despite, you know, we're seeing improved conditions elsewhere in the world. So those are the key things to look out for for Japan. Out of China, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the NBS private sector PMI numbers and the Kaisen numbers for June. So the June ones are going to have you know, for the Kaisen will be the key drivers. Um, both manufacturing and service sector activity need, needs to rebound. And with the prospects of a possible trade war resuming between the US and China, the Chinese government will probably want to see domestic support for economic recovery. And that means a pickup in service sector activity over manufacturing. So that will be the key areas to focus on. So it seems the PMI figures uh, will definitely be affecting the Asian markets next week. So something to look out for. And lastly, to finish up on any geopolitical risks going on next week and specifically the coronavirus pandemic. It's a little bit quiet at the moment. Well, on the geopolitical front, what a, what a mishmash last week. We heard Navarro say the trade deal was off with China and then he came back and said it's on. You know, that's the, that's the things we've become 
come to expect from the US administration, mixed signaling, fake news, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, ultimately, however, we know what they're up to. Trump's trying to deflect and divert attention away from the fact that his management, as it were, or mismanagement of the coronavirus pandemic has led to a sizable number of deaths and really a, a serious threat of a second wave um, as a number of reopened members, member states talk of spikes in new cases. So, yeah, trade wars with the EU, trade wars with China, these are things that he's going to use. You know, there's nothing else left for him to use to detract voters as Biden takes the lead in, you know, in the polls going into, you know, the November presidential election. So it's going to be an interesting week. So geopolitics will definitely be, you know, on the docket. And then you've got Brexit as well. You know, how much progress are they making? You know, the EU and Britain, they're definitely not seeing eye to eye. So, you know, no, no extension of the transition period. So we're going to need to see progress through July. First week, markets aren't very, you know, patient when it comes to stuff like this. So they're going to need to hear some positive news. Well, that's all for today, Bob. Thank you so much for joining us. And I will see you again next time. That was your week ahead with Bob Mason of FX Empire. Thank you so much for watching. And please remember to stay up to date with all the latest information. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media outlets.